All right. Welcome to another edition of Ranking the Albums. And uh, today's um, album group that we're going to be doing here are none other than the Cars. And to help me uh, rank this uh, decent catalog of the band from Boston here, uh, got none other than Mr. David Hans. Welcome. Thanks again for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. This is a good, uh, good, good, quick one here that we uh, want to get to get done here. Uh, the cars, uh, you know, it's interesting catalog. You know, they they seem like they were around for a long time, but when you look at it as a whole, you know, uh, mm-hmm. seventy eight to eighty four seemed to be like their their real big peak area, and then they kind of, you know, obviously door to door really didn't do anything, and then they kind of faded away. Everybody went into their solo careers, and then. Uh, you know, then surprisingly, we actually get an album in 2011, and sadly enough, it turns out to be their final hurrah. As uh, you know, until they got, you know, they got <clears throat> elected into the Hall of Fame, which uh, was a great honor for them. Mm-hmm. And then, obviously, uh, Rick Ocasek uh, passed away, uh, and that pretty much put a ending to all all cars related things here. Uh, unfortunately. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so we're going to rank all seven of the albums here and, uh, all right, let's dig right in here as we uh, go through the, uh, seven albums that we're going to rank here from the cars. Uh, the debut comes out in uh, 1978 and at this present time, it has reached platinum six times. It charted at number 18 as its peak on the charts back in the day there. And that takes us to the second album, Candio, which is uh, tied for the Cars' uh, second best-selling album of all time. Uh, It has now been certified four times platinum. And it also uh, reached number three on the charts, tying for their highest chart position for uh, one of the Cars' albums. And then uh, the third album, we get Panorama, which came out in 1980. Uh, achieved platinum status and that was followed up by the double platinum status of shake it up which charted all the way at number nine uh, back in 1981 and then the cars had another um, big album heartbeat city which came out in march of 1984 it also has gone four times platinum along with candy o and also it reached number three on the charts which is their highest chart position also along with Candio. And there was a three year delay there before their next album saw the light of day. And that would be the 1987 release door to door, uh, which reached gold and is their last uh, certified album to make it because they only released one more album since that time frame, And that was, Move Like This, which saw the light of day in 2011 and peaked at number seven. And there you have a quick uh, rundown on the album from the cars. Let's go ahead and dig right in. What do you got for your number seven? Uh, my number seven, I have Door to Door. I mean, it's uh, to, to me, at 87, I feel like they were just kind of burned out by that point at the end. Like they had so much success, but the and trying to recreate the formula album after album it just i mean the songs the songs on here are okay but i mean i think the like it's the one that's actually produced by rick ocasek himself so i mean it's, it doesn't have quite the same production value but there's some good stuff on here like i think everything you say is pretty good <clears throat> um door to the title track door to door i like a lot strap me in it's it's good but it's not quite the same like just catchy melodies that they had in the early period so but i th- i think the album they made after this is actually better so all right so um <clears throat> my number seven is um actually a little different oddly enough um for some reason i could just never get into this album like i could any of the other albums by the cars and that's going to be the old quirky panorama so yeah the album that uh Came out back in good old, uh, the third album, 1980, uh, right at the turn of everything changing in the music industry there at that point. You know, everybody was starting to phase out of disco. Punk was really getting full force there. 
Yeah, for some reason, the cars uh, lost me on this album. Unfortunately, uh, you know, well, every Cars album has it has its uh, good songs. Uh, you know, it had a a really good single with "Touch and Go." That that seemed to be, unfortunately, about all that I really uh, enjoyed about the album. You know, I just couldn't really get into the rest of it. Um, you know, nothing more I can really add to it there. Uh, th- you know, this one came out 1980. Like I said, it was re- produced by Roy Thomas Baker. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, maybe maybe because it was a short recording area, they just, you know, April and May was like a two month uh, seri- series where they recorded the album. You know, maybe it was a little rushed. Maybe that, that's that's kind of the feeling I'm getting because it doesn't have like the fine tuning of their previous uh, two albums and uh, definitely nothing like uh, the follow-up, which would be, which would be shake it up. So that's my number seven. And, uh, what do you got for six? Uh, six. I have 2011's move like this. Okay. Yeah. I think it was, it was a nice return form for them, especially after not hearing anything by, from the band. It was kind of unexpected for it to come out. Uh, like blue tip was great. Sad song was good. I, I think the obviously it was out with, without Benjamin Orr, which is definitely a loss. So I think had he been there, it could have been even better. But for what it was, I mean, they kind of went back to the old formula that worked for them in the early period. So I think it was a pretty successful album. I, I wish I would have seen them on that tour, but they only did like a limited number of dates. So yeah, that that one, yeah, it was a unfortunately, yeah, limited limited run. Um, very fortunate to, to have caught that show because like the only show to even play close remotely close to here was Toronto mm-hmm. they played um, <clears throat> the club up there but um yeah yeah I mean, I mean that's a that, I like that album um but uh I'll go over into that when I get to mine because it's actually down a little bit lower here <laughs> so my um my number six is the one that you had uh for seven which was door to door you know, just like you said, another pretty much you, you said a lot about about this one, you know, um, you know, compared to, you know, follow up to Heartbeat City, definitely, uh, you know, there was a lot of stuff going on at that point in time. You know, Rick had uh, released his solo album. Uh, also, uh, Benjamin Moore released his solo album. And uh, yeah, this, this album's very disjointed. Uh, not, not, you know, like you said, Rick Ocasek, it almost sounds like a Rick Ocasek, a solo album in a way, you know, mm-hmm. if you ever listen to some of his solo material, pretty much kind of seems like it almost fits just like that, unfortunately. Um, but uh, door to door, you know, you know, it, I don't know, it just uh, it did have the, the uh, you are the girl, which was a video and a, a pretty big single that reached the top 40. Um but that was the only song that really uh, did anything off this album. I, I don't even remember hearing anything else off this album, you know, on the radio around by us at the time uh, mm-hmm. it was released. But, um, you know, like you said, uh, there's a couple good songs on here. It's not like a total loss or anything like that. Strap me in. Uh, Everything you say was one you mentioned. That was a, definitely one of the highlights I felt wound up on you. Another uh, decent song. But, um, you know, just a lot of <laughs> it just to me, it just sounded like a Rick Ocasek solo album, really, more than anything else. You know, and unfortunately, that's uh, that would be the last album with uh, Ben Oran, unfortunately. Uh, so, yeah, my number six, your number seven. So we're pretty much right in the ballpark there. I think we're going to have <laughs> I would guess our, our lists are going to, you know, the only, the only seven albums are going to be fairly similar and just a little bit of difference and maybe taste a little here and there. But other than that, I think our catalogs will match up pretty decently here, uh, which will bring us to our number five. What do you got for them? Uh, number five, I have shake it up. Um, I like I, another album. I like a lot. I mean, this catalog is small, so they really didn't put out a total dud of a record. So there's, I mean, while I have this at number five, I still, go back and listen to it a lot. I think Cruiser, I always liked it. Benjamin Orr's vocal on that's great. Victim of Love is good. Maybe Baby is good. I mean, I feel like after the failure or the, the critical failure of Panorama, they kind of wanted to get back to what was working for them. So you kind of, they dropped the whole like cold austere production of Panorama and went back to more of a commercial sound. So I think that led to the success of this album. 
So, and I, I, it's, there's a lot of catchy stuff on here. So. Yeah. Yeah. I agree on that. I think they definitely, they made sure they had some good songs ready for the radio on this one for sure. Because it was all three of them that were really solid in my opinion there, <clears throat> but I'll get to that. I guess when, when I get into my ranking and my next album is definitely a little different here. So I'm kind of going back on my number five is kind of what one of yours was there move, move like this, uh, the recent album without uh, Ben Ben Orr, obviously, because he had passed away at, by that point, by the time they came out with it. But um, yeah, you touched it right in, the, right in the head. It was great to see the cars get back and make a new album. And uh, overall, uh, I thought it was, you know, definitely a very solid album that really, uh, you know, it, they didn't make a big fanfare about it or anything yet. It still yeah. reached number seven on the charts, basically on a no name label. That goes to show you, you know, that was, uh, what was that about? Uh, 24 years after their last album, Door to Door, you know, it comes out of the woodwork here. And, you know, it didn't set the world on fire as far as album sales, uh, who, who did after 2000, really. Uh, but, you know, a solid album reached number seven. Um, you know, a fantastic tour that uh, followed where they play, they only played clubs. Uh, they played a mostly the big cities, you know, Chicago and New York and Toronto, Boston, I believe, uh, you know, so it was a short tour, tour didn't last too long. Um, you know, Rick sang all, all the Ben Orr songs that they performed, you know, at that point, um, you know, during the show, they made sure they uh, mentioned, uh, you know, a tip of the hat to Ben Orr, who obviously they missed and they made sure that they let the fans know, you know, that they, um, how he, he was remembered and they definitely made sure to let everybody know, you know, how, how great of a contribution he was to the band and mm -hmm. everything, which was cool. Um, you know, but it was cool to see at least all the other regular remember my members there, you know, obviously he had, uh, Elliot Easton on guitar, Greg Hawks on keyboards and the drummer, David Robinson. So that yeah, was cool to see those guys. Cause I, I never did get to see them back in the day. So, uh, luckily I was able to go, get up to Toronto to see it sold out show. The place was packed up at sound Academy there. It was just, uh, you know, what you expect, you know, a band who, who at one point was one of the top, top bands, uh, you know, and they disappeared for 20 years, 20 plus years. And then when they finally put on a show, you know, it was good to see, uh, good to see everybody, uh, you know, at least they sold the place places out that they played. That was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, did, did they ever play Buffalo back in the 80s or anything? Uh, they did. Um, uh, I believe they played a couple times. Um, I don't, like I said, I never got to see them. That would have been, you know, sadly way before my time because I think Heartbeat City at that point, I, I, I'm not sure if they even came for Heartbeat City. That's what I'm going to check right now for us because that's an interesting question. You know, I, I'm pretty sure they played a, uh, couple arena shows um for the earlier tours maybe yeah i thought they played the odd a few times yeah it looks like the first three tours they played the odd the first album the candio and panorama so yeah i think the first tour i think they were opening for somebody I, I don't remember that was a little bit before my time there uh, but it definitely it looked like they played an opening set so they must have opened for somebody at that point and then uh pretty sure by the time they were probably headlining the uh, the rest of the other shows with candy and panorama mm -hmm. i would assume but uh yeah it's good 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 live band that never really you know and then rick you know it was interesting because rick rick never liked to play uh okay so he never liked to play live too much uh, even with his solo career he never really did a lot of shows so it was very interesting you know that that he even went out on tour in 2011 so that that was just uh a real treat i was hoping that they would have released um you know something from that tour I, I'm pretty sure they must have filmed one of the shows somewhere because I know they played Chicago twice on that tour. They did it like um, on a regular club show, and then they I think they did some kind of a set out at the big amphitheater out there in Chicago. 
So it might have been a Lollapalooza or something like that, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So that is, uh, takes us up to, uh, it finishes off my number five. And then, well, now we got the top four. What do you got there? Uh, yeah. Um, my number four is Panorama. I mean, I, it's definitely, it's hard to believe that it's still sold a million records, even though most <laughs> people don't like it. Uh -huh. But I think they just sold that many based on the expectation, maybe. People just loved the first two so much that they thought it was going to be a continuation of that, which it's definitely not. I mean, even that, like the, the font and the, just the cover, when you look at like the, the, in comparison to the debut, the debut just looks like much more fun of a listen, which Panorama is not. The, the, like Rick's songwriting on here is much darker and it's it's not, I mean, it's definitely got that more, it's, it's a colder new wave sound. I mean, like Misfit Kid is great. Elliot Easton's solo on Touch and Go, I like a lot. Um, I, I think, I don't know, I, I mean, I respect him for taking a risk, kind of like, because I remember reading an interview with Elliot Easton where he said that it wasn't like a conscious effort to make a change. It was just kind of like a general evolution of the band's sound. Mm -hmm. But when you consider that they never really made an album like this again, I think they realized that if they wanted to stay commercially viable, they couldn't continue to do it. But because I don't think they, had they made a second album like this, they probably wouldn't have sold a million again. But I, I think it, it's kind of like the unloved record from the catalog, but it's one that I think it, it's probably better now than it was received at the time. I, I, I still like it a lot. So. Okay. Yeah, you got it ranked higher than me, so you must like it a lot. I mean, you know, I, I don't know. For me, it was just... Um... Like you said, there, there was a lot of darker stuff on it, you know, and then, that, you know, I don't know why that was or what was going on at that point. But you know, like you said, it, it still reached platinum, you know, but it, it, it was a big lockdown because you go from the debut, you know, selling multi-platinum, you said Candy O, another multi-platinum, put them with Panorama, you only barely sold a million. So luckily, um, that was kind of like, you know, they started, I mean, it was hard to top that car's debut. Let's, mm -hmm. let's be honest, you know, and then you go down, it's kind of like a little bit of a roller coaster, the way their career kind of went, you know, up, you know, started at the top, went down, came up and, <laughs> mm -hmm. but, um, you know, I mean, look, look at the catalog though. It was enough to get them into the hall of fame, which is great. You know, they definitely mm -hmm. just, they were one of the bands I felt that would definitely, definitely deserved it so i'm glad that they got to do that you know before rick passed at least he got to go through the whole induction ceremony and everything and that that was the last time they actually played live they played a couple songs that night so it was mm -hmm. cool to see for sure i know that he and benjamin Orr had a falling out for a while too but i i, I believe they were able to reconcile before he died so yeah all right so you got that for number four and my i'm digging into candio it's the second album from the Cars. Um, Candio always seems like, you know, I always used to hit, a lot of my friends really love this album. And, um, you know, maybe maybe I held something against it because it was the second album they ever made. And it just, you know, there's some good stuff on here. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it's 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 a decent album because it did, it did rank in here at number four for me. Um, but, you know, I just feel that... Um, it could have been better is basically the way I, I look at it. Um, and I was hoping for better, you know, but, you know, to top that debut, that's just next to impossible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so obviously you kick it off in fine style with let's go, you know, uh, it's all I can do. Another great song, the title cut candy. Oh, uh, dangerous type. You know, these are all songs you definitely heard on the radio. Um, and, and maybe that was it, you know, some of them were hits obviously with let's go and it's all I can do. Those were the two big ones from the album, but you know, after the other two that I mentioned, there really wasn't much else on the album that really stands out, um, as much, you know, compared to, uh, some of the other albums that it, it's ranked ahead of, but, um, you know, overall, it's definitely a solid album. It's a good listen. It's one of those albums you can just put on and, uh, you know, you'll get a lot out of it. It's definitely, uh, for a second album, it's definitely not a sophomore jinx by any means, mm -hmm. you know, definitely a solid album. And, um, you know, it, 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 like you said, it did go four times platinum, uh, and it was their first top 10 album, actually, believe it or not. The, um, 
cr it cranked in at number three on the charts here, which, you know, to, to date, that still remains its highest chart position, uh, but it is tied with another one of their albums here. But that that would go to show you how strong the album was, to, you know, to be number three on the charts. That's a pretty impressive feat for your second album. You know, even your first album, which was way better, um, did not chart as high. You know, and only charted at number 18. But I feel the, the Cars album was one of those late bloomer albums where it took a while for people to know who they were and everything. And then all of a sudden, once, you know, once that album really started selling, you know, it just kept selling and selling. And mm -hmm. you can't, can't argue a, a good record like that, that's for sure. So that's my, uh, my number four there, Candy O. So we're getting into the top three. What do you what do you got for yours? Number three. Yeah, I three. I have Candy O. Okay. I think um, it's a solid album. I like Let's Go a lot. Dangerous Type is one of my favorite songs in of the whole catalog. I always really like that a lot. There wasn't even a single off the album. Um, the, the title track is good. I feel like for this album, they it's be, it's almost a carbon copy of the for the first album. They just basically tried to recreate it, but it. I mean, the songs aren't quite as strong just from top to bottom. But it's it's still a fun listen, and I I mean the, the songwriting and the playing and the production is always really sharp. So, but it's not, it doesn't quite live up to the first album. But I feel like they tried to like because they had so much success with it, they tried to just not deviate too much. But it, it's a solid record. Okay, yeah, definitely definitely a, a good album. I really I really like the album. It's just that there's a few more that I like better, <laughs> and uh, and one of those albums is my number three, which would be shake it up so that's my my third uh number three album here and this is really where i first got into the cars you know i started really listening to rock in uh 81 82 area and that and that's when this album came out late late 1981 and i remember 97 rock cranking out you know shake it up the title track there and since you're gone and you know, just just a solid album. This is one of those albums. Uh, I'm not the one. Victim of love. You know, it's just a, just an overall to me. I, I this is the first album. Maybe that's why it's a little bit ranked a little bit higher than Candy O. It's the one that got me into the cars. You know, I wasn't really around when the debut came out, but um, this is the album that that definitely introduced me to the cars and uh, really enjoy this album. Uh, why it's in my uh, top three <laughs> and uh, that takes us to our number two uh, my number two is Heartbeat City I mean it's, I like this album a lot I mean Mutt Lang came in and basically worked his magic and brought the one of their most like they were one probably one of the biggest fans at the time 1984 it was a smash record I think I mean magic is great drive is great you might think is great the title track i mean there's really no weak song on here i feel like he just he took what they were doing really well all along and just kind of took it even further like just to an even another commercial level so it's it's an album i can put on and never skip any track on it so yeah yeah i totally agree that's my number two as well you know i think you, you hit the nail on the head there with mutt lang what a what a job producing this album you know and this would be you know where he, um, you know, was mostly doing ACDC, you know, and here we are in 1984 and uh, Heartbeat City. And he, and this, the, you know, the cars, we got four top 20 singles on this album, you know, and I think that's what really drove this album. And, you know, uh, I know I, I'm not sure when you actually were able to start watching like MTV, but anybody who was around in 1984, um, you might think was the video of the year. And uh, Drive wasn't too far behind it because uh, after that, every time you turned on MTV, you couldn't go anywhere without not seeing the Drive video. So those mm -hmm. two songs were like all over the television constantly. And that obviously that really is what helped, you know, MTV had, was so influential earlier on in the uh, about 1982 to about, you know, 80, 88, really. And then, mm -hmm. you know, that was like the their peak era area there for mtv where it really 
help promote a lot of artists and this was one of the this was a big one here for the cars that you might think video was unbelievable um just the everything about it and it really um was it really hit big you know with the fans and that that's where it really helped drive the album up was mtv here so yeah i mean like you said i think hello again is a, is a great great song there that one um would have loved to seen them back in the day opening up with that one i don't even know if they ever did or not but that sounds like an opening song to me for sure you know they opened the album with it magic drive you might think uh it's not the night you know just a, just an overall very good a good album muck lang uh really really uh did a great job i mean i don't know what else there is to say about this album but it definitely uh is is one of my uh, favorite Cars albums, and you know it's it's weird how Rick wrote pretty much all the songs. You know he had here and there there was a you know some mention of who else might have co-written some of the tracks, but for the most part, you know he he was the the songwriter for this band. You know, and it's odd because Ben, you figure Ben Moore would have had some some writing aspect to it because he was the other guy who sang a good portion of the songs you know they mm -hmm. did a pretty good split there but uh yeah it just goes to show you how how influential rick was and you know obviously rick what a career that guy had because you know not only did he write um you know pretty much uh, most of the cars hits and everything and all the songs then he went on to later produce so many bands and down the mm -hmm. road you know and help yeah. make weezer a household name and you know, he had a good hand in uh, no doubt helping them write some good songs and pre produced so many people. And, you know, you could see, you know, how talented this guy was. He was just a really good, uh, really good producer and a really good songwriter. So that takes us to our number one. And it looks like we're going to have a tie here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my number one, it's obviously the debut. I mean, what can you say about it? I mean, it's one of the best debuts of any band ever, I think, really. I mean, it's it's out there with like it's kind of like the first Boston album where like every song on it was a hit. So yeah. <laughs> I mean, obviously Good Times Roll, My Best Friend's Girl, they're great upbeat poppy songs, just what I needed. It's got great guitar work from Ellie Easton in it, and and moving in stereo is great. I mean, you're all I've got tonight is probably my favorite song off the album. That's the one that really I think it's a classic, but it might be my favorite car song, period. And it's just a I mean, it's an album you can put on any time. It's you hear all you hear still hear it on the radio a lot to this day. So that's that's it, for me. It was an easy choice to be number one. So yeah, that, there's no. I I definitely agree. You know, where's Tom Jennings when you need him? Here we are. Uh, me and you are actually agreeing with number one and number two. You know, how often does that happen? I think it's the first time. So. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, how can you? How can you not? You know. The Cars debut is is the album that you know you want to have in your catalog, and that's you know it's just a phenomenal um, album, you know, and it, it's just unbelievable how a uh, pretty much came out of the seemed like they came out of nowhere. This band, you know, it's interesting career of how they how they you know they formed in Boston, and it's interesting <clears throat> that I didn't even realize Rick Rick Ocasek actually grew up in Baltimore moved to Cleveland and then um you know then he finally um that's where he met Ben Orr was actually in Cleveland even though it says that they you know everybody met in Boston and that's where the band's roots always are traced to because you know they uh that's where Rick and Ben Orr ended up <clears throat> after they went around and played in various bands together then they relocated to Boston and that's where they how they ended up meeting up with everybody else and how the cars were formed, but it's a very interesting story. Be int I'd love to see like a documentary or something on these guys. Cause that would be very cool. You know, all the things that they had to do um, to, you know, to get, to get out there and get signed and, you know, be as, as great as they are uh, to see it all, how it all transpired, you know, cause uh, you know, first album, six times platinum you know that's that's tough yeah. that's tough to do you know you're not gonna like you said the debut boston another one like you mentioned 
to hit, have a, an album that solid on your debut and then to like um I try to top that you know they never did they never topped it but they definitely were creative enough where everything at least you know you know they had their peaks and their valleys but they um they definitely uh maintained a, a great level of uh songwriting musicianship and everything throughout their whole career despite you know you know a lot of, sometimes people put out that first album and you never hear from them again you know mm -hmm. being as, as successful as it was um but you know you, you just mentioned the hit and then the now this is one of those albums to me it's really hard to pick you know which songs you like the best you know if you had to rank the songs in order of how you liked them in this mm -hmm. album i think it, i would probably take me about a half an hour probably to do but uh you know you mentioned uh, you're all i got tonight um yeah i mean uh, bye bye love is one of my favorites uh that was one uh you know that ben uh, sings on you know mm -hmm. it's interesting how they lined up the album too most of the songs that ben sings are near the end of the album with the exception of just what i needed and then rick was on the other one so they they pretty much split the uh, vocals right down the middle on the first uh the first couple albums you know which was pretty mm -hmm. cool it gave it cars a different flavor compared to some of the bands so that's one of the reasons why i like the cars too is because you you know the songs and the vocal styling of both of these guys um you know they, they both are great vocalists obviously just by looking at the uh, songs that they put out as singles and seeing how well they did throughout their career these guys were amazing mm -hmm simply amazing and it's just great to see how um you know that these guys ended up in the hall of fame you know we talk about off air about how nowadays this whole hall of fame thing seems to be <laughs> you know something in itself uh but you know these guys definitely were one of these guys that definitely earned their spot no doubt about it yeah i mean another thing is like El elliot easton he never really gets mentioned as like a in the list of like every favorite guitar player or anything but i think his work throughout this whole catalog is always solid i mean like especially with that first album especially i think like just his his riffs his soloing it's very melodic and his fills i mean his fills almost have that kind of like carrie livgren from carry on we were song kansas quality where like even like his tiny licks or they instantly get stuck in your head so i think it's he really does a great job of kind of his phrasing Oh yeah. Yeah. Elliot's one of these underrated guitar players for sure. And, um, you know, the interesting thing about him is he was, he was left-handed, mm -hmm. you know, you don't, you didn't see too many of those guys out there, uh, you know, in this kind of a level playing most, most guys are right-handed. Uh, but interesting enough, uh, let's see if, let's see how good your cars trivia is here. What, what would you say without really knowing, uh, what would you think was their highest charting single? Uh, maybe, maybe drive yeah yep yeah. exactly you got yeah. it buddy yep for uh, number three yeah. highest charting single in the u.s for them and um i, I can i can see that because they played so mm -hmm. many uh so many times i heard that song like you go into tops or something like that yeah. and there they are playing it um yeah. Yeah. oddly enough they, they had, let's see you only had four songs that cracked the top 10 it's amazing with all those good songs on the first album they didn't even get a top 10 out of that album or mm -hmm. even top 20 uh highest charting song they only released three singles from the first album the highest charting mm -hmm. was just what i needed reaching at 27 and four around uh, good times were only made number 41 so they only had two top 40s on that first album that, that's mind-boggling yeah. considering how you know how many times you heard all those songs on the, there's like five or six you'd hear you know, in a regular rotation on the radio off that album, even in classic rock radio to this day. Yeah. Very interesting. Uh, but um, yeah, so Shake It Up was the next one, which uh, peaked at number four. And then they had a pair of number sevens. Uh, Tonight She Comes. <laughs> and you might think. And so obviously Tonight She Comes was never on a, uh, you know, everybody's heard that song, uh, but it, it was never on a Cars album, oddly enough. It came out on the greatest hits. Um, you know, same with, uh, you know, I'm surprised they didn't put that, uh, you know, just on uh, door to door since it wasn't on an actual 
regular album, you know, maybe that would have helped it, you know, because it's just sometimes you'll see a band do something like that, you know, to help get an album rolling. I guess they were hoping that door to door would have been would have took off better. You know, another thing, too, you know, I remember, too, they never really toured behind that. So yeah. that's a, that's another kiss of death back in the 80s. If you didn't tour behind an album, you know, you were you were basically not going to sell nearly what you could have had you been out on the road pushing it by for sure you know even now to this day you know everybody says well you know everybody says that you don't really uh sell a lot of albums no more per se because of the way music is the whole industry and all you know it's not like you're going to sell physical products as much everything's all digital downloads or whatever mostly Hmm. but um that's how they nowadays they have to tour to make the money because they don't get a lot of record sales, you know? So that's, that's the difference between now and then, but back then had you toured for the album, there's a good chance if the album was any decent, you're going to definitely sell a lot more units yeah. nowadays. Say, if you don't go out on tour for an album, you're losing a lot of money <laughs> mm-hmm. just because there's not, not any, you know, a lot of times radio won't even touch any new albums by any of these legacy artists, unfortunately. No. So, yeah, interesting catalog, you know, it was a short one, easy to do, um, but definitely in my book, one of the best catalogs um, by any of the 80s bands, really. You know, they, they did a great job for the uh, few albums that they had out, but they definitely, uh, definitely a good overall catalog for sure. Mm-hmm. You got anything else to add? No, no, I don't think so. All right. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. Well. We'll be back at it again and uh, for another episode coming up down the road. And uh, other than that, yeah, thanks for coming aboard and uh, helping me rank the cars. Special thanks to David Hens from Music and Other Drugs. Check him out at www.musicandotherdrugs.com for more stories on music, interviews, reviews, etc, etc.